Welcome to my Scrape Universe, it's your boy Aris back again with another video. So, welcome to my first manga review. I'm just going to be covering um, chapter 27, which is basically the start of Torrent of Power. As we move on, I'm going to be going from, you know, this chapter to the most recent chapter. So, don't try to rush me on this. I'm going to be going week to week because I'm trying to spend more time uh, cleaning up my audio. So, let's jump into this shit, alright? So we start off with the market scene, just like the anime, of course. And, you know, this is directly after the Zomasu fight. Of course, Goku gets robbed here. We, if you've seen the anime, you already know what happens. They, these guys underestimate Goku tremendously because they have no idea how much power he possesses. And this idiot here tries to throw a punch at Goku. Well, <laughs> he just flicks him off with one finger, sends him flying into a truck. Sucks to be that guy. Maybe if he was like, you know, farmer level. If he was on farmer level, he he surely would have dealt with Goku. No difficulty, but he's not the farmer, so sucks to be that guy. Um, he quickly deals with everyone else um, until one last guy uh, pulls out a gun, fires it at Goku. And even though he defeats the guy, I'm sorry, Toyotaro, but I really don't appreciate for the not only in the anime but in the manga this man goku getting scratched by bullets now i get why this happened because a lot of people who who complain about me complaining about this keep saying oh it's just because you don't know why he got scratched by a bullet like i know it's plot induced stupidity the reason why he got scratched by a bullet was because they wanted to give him an excuse to go out the train but the thing is they could have done that without them having to retcon Goku's durability, like his durability in Dragon Ball, from my understanding, his base durability was steel. Therefore, bullets should not harm him. Yet here, bullets are. <laughs> so I, I don't know why they took that away from his character. It doesn't make much sense to me, but I, I don't appreciate it. It's really fucking stupid. So after Goku turns in these guys that were attacking him, right? He's talking, uh, trying to talk to at least Whis through the communication device, and he's not responding. Well, the reason why he's not responding is because he's currently training with Vegeta. Now, Whis is complimenting Vegeta, saying that your moves are getting sharper, you're getting better, and Vegeta is still going at him, coming at his neck, throwing punches, and, and blitzing him. Now, I find it to be very interesting that Vegeta was able to see very clearly through one of Whis's illusions, which gives us a good idea of how well Vegeta is progressing in his training. Whis comments that you've grown as a warrior and they continue training. Now Beerus throughout this entire thing, he's just sitting back, he's bored, and he's trying to get some entertainment from watching these two. <laughs> the Oracle Fish, before the guy can walk away, says that they're going to be his strongest rivals. Beerus is like, mm, I, I don't see how that's plausible. And Oracle Fish says, yep. And he says, my rivals. And he replies again, yep. I have absolutely no idea why Beerus gets so pissed off at the notion of Goku and Vegeta becoming his rivals, even though he went out of his way to go find the Super Saiyan God, which was Goku, to go fight him. But now it's completely beyond the scope of his imagination that they're going to become his greatest rivals. But whatever. <laughs> So, Beerus says, you know what, screw it. He calls out to Vegeta, and they stop fighting. Vegeta and Wasting Away, they stop training. And he says, you made a lot of progress, and challenges him to a fight. Now, you're probably thinking, eh, this isn't going to happen, right? There's no, there's no plausible way that they're actually going to show us Vegeta fighting Beerus. There, there's just no way. You'd be wrong, <laughs> because after Whis says you should do it, he does, and he goes into Super Saiyan Blue, he charges at Beerus, and which Beerus, you know, because he's Beerus, catches uh, Vegeta with one hand, and goes to say that, you know, just because you've gotten a higher level than Super Saiyan God doesn't mean that you're just going to be on my level, like, you do realize that I've been playing with you guys this entire time, proceeds to give him the hands and knocks him off of him and then bitch smacks him into the water so this point you you would think ah well 
Vegeta, he's just done. The fight's over. Not quite. Vegeta ascends from all the murky depths and goes into Mastered Super Saiyan Blue. And for the people that haven't been reading the manga, don't know anything about this shit, basically, Master Super Saiyan Blue is the form of Super Saiyan Blue that allows Goku and Vegeta to basically use 100% of Super Saiyan Blue's power at all times. And they do that by, from my understanding, basically absorbing the godly essence directly into their body and containing it within their body, which allows them to draw out the absolute max of its power. So before in the previous arc, if you haven't um, read it, Zamasu, when he was fighting Goku, Goku was using his master Super Saiyan Blue against Zamasu, and that's how he was able to keep up with him. And Vegeta at the time didn't have it, so now he does. So I appreciate Toyotaro giving my boy Vegeta some shine and allowing him to attain Super Saiyan Blue, the master's form, anyway. To skip forward a little bit, these guys were throwing hands for several panels until finally Vegeta lands a solid hit against Beerus. And, um, well, <laughs> he doesn't take that too well. And before you know it, there's a massive explosion that goes off. Vegeta is just down the ground and I find this to be incredibly interesting because this just solidifies that Beerus really really was not trying against Super Saiyan God Goku in any capacity he literally downs him in one shot and mind you this is way after the U6 versus U7 tournament and this is after the battle of Zamasu and this is like literally right before the tournament of power even right before the tournament of power he can still one-shot Goku and Vegeta. That just shows you how massive of a gap there is between Goku and Vegeta and Beerus. And that's one of the things that I hate about the anime is just they never clearly emphasize the power difference between Goku, Vegeta, and Beerus. So I'm glad they did some... Uh, oh, sorry. I'm glad the Toyotaro, because I'm thinking the anime, so I'm thinking there's multiple writers, whereas for the manga, it's just Toyotaro. Um... For Toyotaro, I'm glad that he was actually able to give, you know, Vegeta, uh, well, actually able to clarify for us how powerful Goku and Vegeta are comparatively to that of Beerus. So, it appeared that Vegeta was a little bit down, but Whis was trying to cheer him up by saying, you know, you don't have to feel the sting of defeat. You know this guy is ultra-powerful. You shouldn't have to feel too bad about losing to him because he's the god of destruction, and he's one of the greatest foes you're ever going to face. Period. Um, but... I'm actually glad that Vegeta, he just picks himself right back up, says, I have a long way to go. We're far from reaching our full potential. And as long as I know that, that's all I need. And I think this, this right here was definitely the most definitive moment of this manga chapter for me. Is that Vegeta says, I'm the one who gets to the top first. And I'm sick of following after him referring to Goku. How long... Did it take for Vegeta to just utter these simple, simple words? Maybe like 120 or so episodes into, into the anime? Because from my understanding, the only time where he literally just says, Screw Kakarot, I'm going to do my own thing, I'm going to get stronger my own way, was during the anime and like, what was it, like 128? After um he fought Jiren? It might have been the episode before that, it might have been 127. It's one of the two, but he, he after that point, he said, you know, screw Ultra Instinct, I'm going to get powerful my own way, and only 27 chapters here, 27, and he's already saying, yeah, no, screw that guy, I'm going to get strong, and I am going to surpass him, I'm not following after him anymore. Good job, Toyotaro, I appreciate this, <laughs> I appreciate this a lot. Moving forward. Um, Goku finally catches up to Whis and gets his attention. Goku is basically, this, this whole freaking panel is just Goku trying to, um, trying to convince Whis to come to Earth so they can train. He's bribing him with freaking Daifuku. So, they come back down to Earth. They're about to leave and go back to Beerus' planet. V Goku asks Vegeta, why are you leaving? And Vegeta, of course, this is the character development where he got... And uh, he's saying, you know, I'm staying with her because she's about to have another kid. If I leave, she'll never forgive me. It's called being a good father. Of course, this is beyond Goku's comprehension. 
<laughs> this is a pretty funny moment where uh Vegeta says, Listen, you may not be a bad person, but you're a horrible father. We skip to Goku, Beerus, and Whis after they finish eating their Daifuku. And before Beerus can walk off and actually take his nap, this is when he talks to him about the promise that uh he made with Zeno, which is the Lord of Everything here. Of course, Beerus is like, listen. Don't fuck around with um, the lore of everything. There's no point in doing that. That is a very dangerous idea. This this guy, Goku, doesn't really understand how much of a freaking threat that Zeno is. So Beerus has to lay it out for him. He, he's just thinking along. He's he's just a, like he, he is just kid like persona. So he can't be of any threat to anybody. Despite the fact that he can casually erase universes. There's no threats anywhere here. <laughs> and even Weiss chimes in and says, listen, I wouldn't recommend that you do that. You never know what's going to happen with the guy. I think this is very important. And I know a lot of people probably glimpse right over this. But one of the things that Weiss says is that please remember that he has the power to annihilate the entire universe. And this is one of the reasons why... I constantly say that, or this at least this is one of the reasons why I say that Goku is not universal, is because narratively it wouldn't make sense for Goku to be able to annihilate the entire universe. They haven't even stated that Beerus himself has the power to annihilate the entire universe. It's only possible when he's clashing with Champa or I assume any other god destruction. So Zeno is the only person, the only being stated to be able to annihilate the entire universe because he needs to be a threat to the guys below him, right? If someone like Goku or Beerus or anybody else could also annihilate the entire universe like Zeno, that would diminish the threat that Zeno poses to these guys narratively in the story, which is the reason why I don't think that Goku is universal and he probably never will be universal. Um, unless they state otherwise other than that goku says you know what screw it <laughs> i'm out of here he presses the button and he disappears um one major difference that i noticed from the anime to the manga here is that in the in the anime beerus outright says listen i'm going to fucking hakai you if you go and try to talk to zeno whereas here he never makes that threat i welcome that change because what goku did and the anime was completely retarded. Goku, dead ass, just ignored the threat of destruction from a G.O.D. Like, <laughs> I'm sorry, but that's stupid no matter how you think of it. Toyotaro said, we're not doing that here. He just goes off before he can even really say much more about the topic. And he disappears. Much different than being literally threatened with the hakai and just giving someone the middle finger like so dumb um at the end of it i gave this a 7 out of 10 i think this was a good chapter uh i definitely had to give plus one to the vegeta versus beerus fight usually when something like that is epic is about to happen in the anime they they always either they don't do it or they make act like they're about to do it and they don't so i'm glad we got to see that and, and them fighting seriously anyway, or at least Vegeta was fighting seriously against them, which it clarified a lot of things with the difference in power between Vegeta and therefore Goku with Beerus. Um, I'm glad Vegeta got some shine with uh, Master Super Saiyan Blue and his speech that he gave where he said, I'm not going to follow Goku anymore was also a very important to his development. The only downside I saw was that Goku being scratched by a bullet. That was about it. Other than that, um... Thanks for watching the whole thing. I'll be going over some other shit later in the week. And then um, next week, I'll go over the next chapter as well. So I'll see you guys later. Your boy, Ars.